In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to add, edit, and remove lead stages inside of your lead pipeline of Salesforce CRM. So you can go ahead and customize the lead process to be bespoke to your business. Welcome to the channel. My name is Nick. Thank you ever so much for giving this video a watch. Hopefully it will be of value to you. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help with Salesforce, please check out my website below. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So once you log into your Salesforce system, of course, you will come to the home screen. Now, in order to add, edit, and remove lead stages for our leads pipeline, what we need to do is head over to the cog in the top right-hand corner, as you can see, go to setup, and then select the setup option. And then once this is loaded and it's likely to create a new tab in your browser, go to the left-hand side, go to platform tools, and then we wanna select objects and fields. So go ahead and select objects and fields, and then just go to object manager. So once you're in the object manager, I would recommend you can just scroll down if you'd like to, but I'd recommend just using the quick find and just search for lead. And this is the object that we're gonna be editing. So go ahead and select the lead. And then on the left-hand side, go to fields and relationships once this page has loaded. And then I would again just recommend using the quick find. You can scroll if you'd like, just search lead stage, or you can just search lead, uh, sorry, not lead stage, lead status. And um, so search lead status or just search status and the lead status field will appear. Go ahead and select that. Now, if you're working in Salesforce Lightning, like I currently am, you'll be prompted to open up the, um, the Salesforce Classic as the back end of Salesforce has not caught up the front end of the, uh, the system yet. So they're still working in Salesforce Classic for making any system changes. So just go ahead and press click here to open this page in Salesforce Classic. And then you will be presented with the Salesforce Classic page on this particular lead field. And as you can see here, we've got our different stages, new, contacted, working, qualified, and unqualified. Now, if I just head back to our home screen for Salesforce and then just go to leads, I'm just gonna go to Andy Smith as our example. And you can see we've got new, contacted, working, unqualified, and converted. So they are our different stages and you can see those represented here. Now, the, thir the first thing that I'd like to demonstrate as I said, we'll be, uh, I'll be showing you how to add, edit, and remove stages. So firstly, let's go ahead and add a stage. So if you go ahead and press the new button, and then you need to give your stage a name. So I'm gonna call this example stage, um, and then again, example stage. And then once you've done that, we can select whether this is converted or not. So by ticking whether it's converted, it means that when this uh, when the record enters this stage, you'll be prompted to convert the lead into an account, a contact, or a deal, or it's just another stage on the pipeline towards being converted. And then we have the option to select default. So default is the starting uh, the starting stage for our lead. So you traditionally have that, of course, at the start of the pipeline. And if you want it wanted this particular stage uh, to be the the default stage. <clears throat> then you can go ahead and select that. So once you're happy, just press the save button and your new stage will now be added. As you can see here, the example stage has now been added. It was neither converted nor default. We didn't set it to either of these. So you can see we've now added that stage. If we head back to our leads area and just press the refresh button, we will now see the example stage has been added to our pipeline. However, <clears throat> you're probably thinking, well, that's actually not where I want that particular stage to go. So that's not a problem. If we go up to the top right hand corner again, uh, or, or sorry, go back to the alternative tab, go back to the Salesforce Classic page, and then next to new, we have got the reorder option. So go ahead and press reorder, and it's a really, really easy process. We can just move it up and down accordingly and position it in the part of the pipeline that we would like to position this particular stage. So you can just move it accordingly. You can move other stages as well. So just go ahead and select the stage that you'd like to move and then move it accordingly. You can put display values alphabetically, not in the order entered. You can select that if you'd like to. And as currently I mentioned a moment ago, the default value is new, but you can change that if you would like to. So once you're happy with the repositioning, just press the save button and let's head back to the Salesforce system and you'll see that that stage has now been moved, as you can see, to this part, which is the third part piece or piece of the process along the pipeline. 
So if we go back to Salesforce Classic again, <clears throat> and I also said that we were gonna, I was gonna show you how to edit any stage. So we can go ahead and press the edit button by any stage. Um, we are then able to change the name. We can select whether it's converted, default, and we've got the color options as well, if that is of any interest to you. So editing any stage is really, really easy. And then finally, we can deactivate and delete. <clears throat> now, deactivating is essentially a soft delete. So when you deactivate a stage, it will not completely remove it from the system. It will kind of just remove it from the pipeline, but it also allows you to re-add that stage at any time. So a good example of when you might use deactivate is let's say you're redefining your sales process. If you are doing that or you're redefining your leads process and you're A-B testing different stages, you may deactivate a particular stage and then in two months time, once you've done your processes or you're redefining them or A-B testing them, you find that that stage was actually quite useful or it's better to have it than not have it, you can then go ahead and reactivate that stage again. And then, like I said, we've got the delete option. And if we press delete, that will completely remove that stage from our pipeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the delete button for our example stage and just press the okay. And then we are given this option, delete value example stage from pick list and replace value on records with new or replace value on records with blank value. So if you're deleting a stage and there are, there are records at that stage, what we can go ahead and do is change all, or we can essentially do a mass update to change that stage accordingly, or we can just leave it as blank. So I'm gonna leave it as blank, press the save button. This usually takes a moment when you're deleting anything from Salesforce, so do bear with it. Um, and then once that has been deleted, it will then be removed from your lead pipeline. As you can see here, it's now gone. If I go back to our leads area, press the refresh button, you will now be able to see that the example stage has gone again. So hopefully that has covered absolutely everything. Like I said, you can change the default if you just um, go ahead and press the edit button. By the way, you will see here that you cannot delete the new stage and that is because it is a default. If you change the default, you can. Um, and obviously you can change the converted stage as well. So at the moment, the converted stage is qualified, but you can change that to another stage if you would like to. Hopefully this video has been of value and I'll see you in a moment's time. Hopefully you are now all set to go ahead and customize your lead pipeline inside of Salesforce CRM to represent exactly how your business manages your leads. If you have enjoyed the video or found it at all useful, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you have any further questions at all, you are more than welcome to drop a comment below or you can email me as my details are in the description below and I'll do my absolute best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.